Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Monday, October 14th, 2019. Let's take a look at what's happening in the tropics. We'll start off today with this uh, Twitter post here from the Weather Underground caught my attention. And the whole idea of impact, we talk about that a lot. This typhoon, Hagabis over there, or however you say it, in Japan, look at all the flooding that they've had. They are very well prepared, generally speaking. But no matter how well prepared you are, rainfall is going to get you. All right? And this is the big headline here. It's killed upwards of 57, 58 people, unfortunately, in a very well prepared country for typhoons. Um, and yet the rainfall is the big headline here. Of course, the typhoon weakened as it made landfall, much like they do in the United States often. Sometimes they don't. But in this case, look at what's happening here. You can read about it, I'm sure, on social media. Lots of articles about the devastating floods in the wake of the typhoon as it interacted with a front and energy from the jet stream. How often do we see that in the United States? Okay, so very similar parallels here. And here you go. That picture really, you know, they say it's worth a thousand words. And this is what I'm talking about. It's not just the wind or the storm surge or the low pressure. It's that rainfall that seems to keep getting us every time. Well, not every time, but more often perhaps than it should be. All right. So where are we? Well, we are about right here. We have passed the main peak of the season. Now we're at this sort of secondary peak. But climatology alone does not dictate exactly what happens. It's a good guide. And this time of year, we would expect to see, you know, a decent amount of activity in the Atlantic Basin. And lo and behold, that's what we have. In fact, all of the activity around the globe right now is centered here in the Western Hemisphere. Um, the eyes have it, as it were, an area of interest here. These eyes all represent invests, one off the coast of Central America, another one here, in the, uh, what would you call that, the Central Tropical Atlantic, one right off the coast of Africa. And this is the leftovers of Melissa, so we won't worry about this any longer. So if you look at the National Hurricane Center, the graphical tropical weather outlook, this is the two-day version. We expand it out to the next five days, and you can see there are several systems here. Uh, this is going to be worth watching, I think. Potential for something to maybe try to develop as a piece of this energy associated with the Central American gyre. Part of it's going to move into the southeastern Pacific and develop. Another piece of that energy could go into the Bay of Campeche and try to develop there. 20% uh, chance over the next five days, but we'll see what happens. You notice that they say by Wednesday, however, the lowest forecast to emerge over the southern Bay of Campeche where conditions could become a little more conducive for some further organization to occur. So that's several days out, and we'll see what happens as this goes forward. But there's, there's a chance there that we could see something try to get going. Meanwhile, east of the islands, 20% chance over the next several days. Not much chance, I mean, obviously, 80% chance that nothing happens. Strong upper-level winds in this area are going to preclude anything significant. But maybe some more of that R word, rain, for this part of the islands down here. Maybe Barbados. Um, I don't think as far south as Trinidad and Tobago. But we'll look at this in a moment on satellite. And then, very, very out of season, if you will, or out of the climatological part, way out in the eastern Atlantic, right off the coast of Africa, uh, probably going to get a tropical depression and maybe a tropical storm. Very, very unusual to see this happen. And um, it just shows you that you just never know. And, I mean, it, it's like... This is like having a hurricane in January somewhere. I mean, honestly, this is very, very rare to see something to develop right off the coast of Africa this late in the season. Um, there's just not much ridging, so it's going to turn northwest immediately. And in fact, probably turn back towards the Canary Islands of all places. And it, it, very unusual. I don't know what else to say. It's, 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 uh, luckily, it'll be short-lived, uh, but it will bring some impacts to some areas that are also unusual to talk about impacts. I mean, once in a while we get these storms impacting the Cabo Verde Islands uh, and maybe the Canary Islands, but this is really, I'll say it again, unusual. Uh, then we have the remnants of Melissa way up in the North Atlantic, 
no no reason to even talk about this any longer. So if we look at all this via the satellite animation, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, which gets its information from the National Weather Service, and I'll explain, like, why would you say that at the end here today? Just a small little window of commentary that I'm going to add. Um, nice animation here from Levi Cowan and his coding prowess that he has. Uh, you notice this large gyre? That's the reason. Large rotating area, counterclockwise down here. Energy kind of tangled up with Central America. A piece of that energy will eventually develop, it looks like, in the southeastern Pacific. Another piece of this energy could end up again in the Bay of Campeche. And then we've got this front coming through. And the steering pattern would be as such that it probably would turn to the north and east. Even if it's just a rainmaker, you know, all i got to do is point back to this and remind you, yes, rain is a really, really big problem. And I think if you've followed my updates enough, by now you know that I'm all about that, that the impacts are what we focus on. Not just, you know, oh, if it's a hurricane, I'm going to pay attention. If it's not, I'm not. That's ridiculous thinking. It is. Um, so, anyhow, this is a problem for Central America for various reasons. Maybe down the road a problem for the Central Gulf Coast or the Western Gulf Coast here, including, uh, obviously, Mexico. We shall see. Down here you can see the upper-level winds taking their toll on this system, stretching the cloud shield out as upper-level winds are very strong. But... There is some energy trying to coalesce. It's just too late in the year to really do so with any significance, and it'll continue to march off to the west and west-northwest with time, and again, maybe bringing some inclement weather to parts of the Windward Islands. We will watch that. And then here is our unusual storm system off the coast of Africa, well on its way to becoming a tropical depression, very good defined, well-defined circulation center. Um, but again, it's going to looks like develop and then head off in this direction. This will be fascinating to watch from a meteorological perspective over the next several days. And we can start that process here looking at the Euro. This is the very latest ECMWF, and this is the 5,000-foot level of the atmosphere. Here's the east coast of North America. Go around like that. There's South America there, west coast of Africa. Um, what else? You know, going on a geographic tour. There's Ireland. For example, here is the Iberian Peninsula with Spain and Portugal. You get the idea. There's all your features. Okay, so here's the energy off of Africa. Here's the tropical wave. So this is 94L. We'll put a 94. This, I believe, is now 95L. And disturbance not yet labeled as an invest, I don't think. I think there's one down in the Pacific here, uh, if I recall. Um, so there's that energy there. This is the remnants of Melissa. All right, so there's a few other things to watch. Look at this giant area of energy up over Canada, and you're going to get this energy uh, piece, a low pressure area develop off the mid Atlantic and quite create, if I can talk, slow down, Mr. Mark, create quite the doozy of a storm, a nor'easter, off of New England. So this is the initial map. Here's tomorrow morning, so 24 hours out, bingo. There's our probable, you know, tropical storm Nestor or tropical depression 15 or whatever it would be. Um, just not much ridging over on the east side of it. You see the center of the ridge is over here, so it'll just kind of float north, so to speak. They don't really do that, but on the map, if you look at this straight down as we are on this Mercator projection, you know, north is at top, and they do tend to try to float north, typically. And there's just not much ridging to force it off to the west. Um, not much else happening. You see a little bit of, you know, this trying to get together in the southeastern Pacific. There's this impulse there. We'll move along to 48 hours. And this system's still there, just north of the Cabo Verde Islands. A little bit of energy here heading towards the windwards. This develops a little bit. Now we've got some energy trying to, you know, the north end of that Central American gyre the larger piece of energy there in the Bay of Campeche trying to develop. So that's interesting. And also, look what's going on in the Carolinas. You've got the surface low developing maybe down my by my neck of the woods. Upper level energy here, surface energy here, and that is going to create one heck of a storm by midweek. And we can see that by 72 hours. Wow. 
you know, it's got that front attached to it. But that's a mid-latitude storm, a nor'easter, and that's going to be one heck of a storm. Probably going to knock the power out for a lot of people. Uh, the trees mostly still have the leaves on them. So from, you know, New England proper, and you look at different areas, southeast New England up through the Gulf of Maine. Um, and by the way, this is Thursday morning. This is going to be a big, big problem up there. Uh, not much snow, maybe in the real high elevations. If this was January, you'd be talking about a heck of a blizzard. But heavy rain, coastal problems, high wind, you name it, that is headed to the area up in New England. Uh, at 96 hours, Euro has a little bit of a reflection of something weak in the Bay of Campeche, Western Gulf. And then there's this tropical system, probably a tropical storm, hanging around again north of the Cabo Verde Islands. And we'll go back over here to this part. Let's go to the, let's see, i got to refresh this. Da, da, da. Get my 96, open it up. I was waiting for this to load while I was recording all this. There we go. At 96 hours, um, oh, I screwed up. That's not 96. <laughs> That's 24. We'll get it right. There's 96. Copy the image. You know what? Let's just do that. Boop. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, at 96 hours, that's interesting in the Gulf. We'll watch that. Powerful storm up here in the uh, Canadian Maritimes, uh, southeast Canada, north of Nova Scotia, through the Gulf of Maine, Bay of Fundy. Wow. I mean, that is really going to be that's going to be a big newsmaker for that part of the world. And there's our tropical whatever, storm, depression, I don't know, whatever it might be. At that point in time, one or two ace points from it, accumulated cyclone energy, interesting to talk about, etc., so forth and so on, but that's about it. And a little kink in the isobar right there of that energy moving through the eastern Caribbean. Now we go back, move this to day 120, come on, or hour 120. No, we don't have 120 day forecast, sorry. Uh, so at 120 hours... That's interesting, right there near Louisiana. So I got to watch this closely. That is valid this coming Saturday morning. Um, so that could be, we might need to be focusing on this more, okay? And, and obviously I will. Big storm system up here over southeast Canada. Not much left of this. Little impulse there. My computer behind me trying to talk to me. So it's busy, folks. This carries us on through the 19th of October with a lot going on to keep our eyes on, nothing major league, no hurricanes, but I don't want people to be fixated on that. I won't preach on that too much, but we do have impactful weather events, but no hurricanes, so be thankful for that. But, you know, this down here in uh, the Gulf, you know, that could be interesting. We'll see. This is five days out, and you just never know. In five days, you might have a completely different look one way or the other, weaker, where, oh, it didn't turn out to be anything after all, or maybe significantly stronger. We know how these things go. All right, so real quick, just a small soapbox moment here, as they say. I'm going to get on my soapbox. Interesting uh, day on weather Twitter, says uh, Ryan Stouffer here. I think that's how you say his name. If you haven't seen this yet, search for it on YouTube. Last week tonight with John Oliver the whole idea of um, private weather and the National Weather Service, watch it. It's definitely got some, you know, four-letter words in it, as John Oliver does with his comedy. But the very serious side of this is this. I do what I am able to do because of the National Weather Service. AccuWeather, which is the big part of what John Oliver's story is all about, the Weather Channel, the Weather Company, IBM, um, the Weather Underground, all of those related companies, Capital Weather Gang, Levi Cowan at Tropical Tidbits, the folks behind Weather Nerds, all of the Storm Chasers, right? Josh Morgerman, you know, even James Reynolds over in Japan, any of the chasers that you know in Europe, and yes, there are Storm Chasers in Europe. They all rely on the biggest, largest crowdfunded weather product in the world, you know, I'm on Patreon. I talk about that often right here. That's crowdfunding, but, you know, that's two or $3,000 a month. We're talking billions of dollars of taxpayer 
or in the case of the European model, that consortium that gets involved to help fund that. And it's very, very important. And so people like me who run a very tiny little enterprise compared to AccuWeather or the weather company and its related companies do what we do because of the National Weather Service in, in the United States and because of the cooperation with um, Meteo France, the UK Met, JMA, the Japanese Meteorological Agency, and the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. That global effort is important. And the crowdsourcing of individuals with their information. Think about all of the people that I interact with on Twitter, YouTube, especially when we think of YouTube and all the comments that you guys make about your weather and how smart you are. And that's true, and I'm not just blowing sunshine up your rear ends, kissing butt here, it's true. We have this amazing group of people in the world, around the world, all you know, the Caribbean, elsewhere, that follow my work, other people's work that you know very well. Um, you think about Morgerman and how many followers he has, James Reynolds, and there are plenty of others. And my point is, you know, this is a very funny piece. If you haven't seen it yet, it's, it's funny. And that's what political satire is about. But at the root of it, you really do appreciate what we get from the National Weather Service here in the United States, the largest crowdfunded weather project on Earth, probably. Um, I'd have to compare and see what it does in terms of, I'm sure it's got a lot of funding uh, compared to the Euro and, and the ECMWF, but that would be interesting to know. Bottom line, is very important, and we all appreciate it very much. We also appreciate what the private companies do, and remember, I am one of those private companies. My base company is called Hurricane Maps Enterprises. That's my tax ID company. Founded it 25, 26 years ago, something like that, and I have relied on day one on the National Weather Service. But along the way, I learned a lot from the Weather Channel, which used to be owned by Landmark Communications. It's gone through various owners over the years, right? I learned a lot from Joe Bastardi, who used to be with AccuWeather. Now he's with uh, WeatherBell. And it goes on and on and on. We're all in this together. And yes, we need to keep the Weather Service as open and available and non-business oriented as possible because trying to privatize science is not a good idea in my opinion you know when it's all available to everybody everybody wins so there's my piece um, it just it's another one of those like look the bigger picture is we're all in this together let's support what we've got and the weather service is uh, is obviously at the root of it here in the United States, speaking specifically. All right, so there you go. Soapbox coming down off of it. Love to hear your comments about it, and we'll see. All right, hopefully I didn't move too deeply into uncharted waters, but as often as I cite the Weather Service, National Hurricane Center products, and, you know, it's just, duh. We need it, and it's much appreciated more than those folks will ever know. So there you go. All right. Lots to watch over the next week. Hard to believe it's mid-October. For those of you saying it's not very busy, you know, look again. It definitely is, minus, of course, the hurricanes. We'll see about that. All right. I think I'm done trying to finish, finish this up and wrap it up nice and neat. That is it for me for today, as always. You know, like we appreciate the weather service, I appreciate you guys. Without you consuming my videos and watching them and becoming crowdfunding partners for what I do, there'd be no reason for me to be here, would there? So I appreciate it very, very much. Have a great rest of your Monday afternoon. I am Mark Suddeth for the private company, HurricaneTrack.com. But, hey, readily available to everybody. Have a great rest of your week. As always, thanks again for tuning in. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.